Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm going to be talking about a new workflow orchestrator in town. And new is uh, like in quotes. Uh, because probably, like, who is using Airflow here? Who who are the users? Yeah, a lot of people, yes. I, I know a lot of people use Airflow. Uh, so it's not that new. It has 10 years, uh, actually. But I think what we do is, is pretty new and innovative in, in, in Airflow. I want to talk about that one. A uh, few words about myself. I'm uh, Jarek. Uh, I'm from Poland. But I also have a, a live partially in Slovakia. Uh, I'm independent open source contributor and advisor, uh, and it's a rare, rare species, species as, as was mentioned before, but I hope more people like me will be able to leave from contributing to open source. I'm a PMC member and committer on Apache Airflow. Uh, I'm also a member of the Apache Software Foundation, which is a great organization. So Apache Software, like uh, Apache Airflow is, is uh, under the umbrella of Apache Software Foundation. I also happen to be security committee member of the ASF, so if you want to talk about CRA and security and what's going on in the space, I'm happy to talk about that. I, that's, that's something that I, I live and breathe as well. What's, what I'm going to talk about today, uh, I'll talk, like for those who don't know Airflow, and even for those who know, uh, I'll tell a little bit about what Airflow is. Uh, I'll tell about the community and why Airflow is strong and is getting stronger. Uh, and I will explain a few areas where we worked for the last few years on, on making Airflow better and more, in a, more or nicer, better, more modern, and looking out into the future. Uh, so Doug Outering experience, modern UI, concept of Airflow as a platform, and the enterprise readiness of Airflow. And a teaser a little bit about Airflow 3, because we are already discussing Airflow 3. We are not stopping. We are not stopping innovating. And we just started discussions on the dev list. The, literally, two days ago, we had a, three days ago, we had a first dev call about the Airflow 3 and what are the principles. And I'll, I'll tell like what is our thinking right now as a community, uh, which direction we are, we are taking for Airflow 3. First, what is Airflow? And, I, don't, I think Snowflake guys are, are gone already, but I just added this Snowflake logo just at, during their presentation so that you know, they can see it, but they are gone. So Airflow is, a, is, is literally like a conductor in the orchestra. Uh, Airflow doesn't do much generally. It just tells others what to do. So this is the role of orchestrator, and the name is not accidental. Uh, it basically makes sure that everything, all the data processing pipelines are working together in a tune, in like well-organized so-called DAGs, so the data uh, well, directed acyclic graphs, uh, which is like tasks are following one and another in one direction only, without cycles. And Airflow has like number, big number of integrations with all the other kind of services that you can imagine, uh, including those that you can see here. Uh, so basically, if you know what Airflow does, it does almost nothing. I think this is this is the, the meme I'm, I often use. Like this this analogy is very close to me because I'm a, a choirist. I sing I sang for 30 years in a choir, so I know how it looks like. And indeed, the conductor is just doing nothing during the uh, during the performance. Um, which is not true, of course. I mean, the, it's it's like it's absolutely necessary, but you don't actually see because it doesn't do much, uh, and there is a lot of preparation before and all the stuff that uh, that makes sure that everyone is playing in the same tune and the same time and making sure that it's all coordinated. So, so this is all about Airflow. I will not talk more about Airflow itself. I'll tell more about the. The, the areas that make Airflow modern and strong and strong and something that you should look at. So first of all, Airflow is open source and always will be. Because Airflow is uh, the largest project is in, in ASF, in Apache Software Foundation, in terms of number of contributors we have as of last two weeks ago. We have 2,900 contributors to Airflow. That's a lot. It's like we bypassed Spark two years ago and we continue uh, increasing the gain uh, since then. We have 60 plus committers, 30 plus PMC members. Not everyone is active, but that's, these are the numbers of people who are reviewing and deciding on the direction of the product. Basically, so a lot, quite, the community is quite strong. And there is 10 years history behind Airflow. 
Uh, what is big part, an important part of the this community setting we have is that we are part of the Apache Software Foundation, which, if you don't know, is a one of the largest foundations for the open source in the world, uh, one of the first. And uh, this year is 25th anniversary. So uh, we have Community Over Code event. Last week was one in Bratislava, which was I was there. And uh, there will be in October uh, Community Over Code in Denver, celebrating 25 years of history of Apache Software Foundation. So one big thing, Apache Software Foundation motto is all uh, like Dean. It's a non-profit uh, CO 503C 501C3 non-profit organization registered in US. And the motto is uh, uh, release software for public good, basically. And this is the most important thing. Not the members' interest is important, not the corporate stakeholders uh, uh, are important because we don't basically have not many. <laughs> like we have many, but they are not. They have no impact on what we do as a, as a foundation. No decisions. Uh, so the motto of Apache Software Foundation is uh, release software for public good, and that's that's actually what what we are doing. It's well established. Airflow is well established. Has a strong governance. Uh, has a number of stakeholders that are making sure that uh, a lot of work is being done. Astronomer, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they are all releasing Airflow as a service, so you can use this the Airflow for, for in their clouds. Uh, thanks to thanks to them, but they are also. All of them except Microsoft. I have to tell that. So, Astronomer, Amazon, and Google—they are actually contributed to contributing to the community. Microsoft less so, and hopefully they will uh, in the future. Uh, but they are contributing a lot of energy, effort, people uh, to the community and, and making Airflow stronger. So, lots of the work that we do for Airflow three is done together. So, all the competitors are working together on Airflow, which is great. I'm happy to work with all of them and this is how I get money because all of them are paying me <laughs> basically that's to be there in the middle uh, independent that's that's really cool uh, uh, we also have a thanks to Apache Software Foundation this is something that we shouldn't uh, uh, we shouldn't forget and this is very important in the upcoming regulation world uh, I don't know how much you know about the CRA and regulation in the space and the security regulations that is coming into two three years so uh, Apache Software Foundation has one of the top-notch security processes out there for managing the software and we are already fulfilling the criteria of CRA that is going to be in three years basically like we we don't have to do much we will do a lot still but we are already there like not like many other companies or foundations uh, as I said airflow 10 years it started in Airbnb actually it started in Facebook but that's a secret that nobody knows uh, it was incubated in 2016 uh, then in 2019, and that's more or less where I joined the product a little bit before that, uh, it became a top-level project, which means it went through the incubation and has this strong governance and, and passed all the kind of checks. And since then, a lot of things happen, happened. So like four years, uh, four years ago, in 2020, uh, towards the end of it, we released Airflow 2.0, which was a major... Uh, improvement in, in the way how we are working with Airflow. Uh, we removed a number of deprecations then. We rethought some of the parts of Airflow and released Airflow 2.0. Uh, and since then, we started regularly, almost every three months, to release new feature releases. So to, right now we are at 2.9. Uh, so that, was, that one is actually not accurate. I put a, a previous, previous version of this. So we are at 2.9 right now. Right now. And we have uh, a lot of users, as you know. Uh, I mean, lots of them are here. Uh, in 2024, we're going to have our Flow Summit in, in Bay Area with up to 1,000 people that will come. Last time, we had a Toronto event with 500 people. I was like, uh, uh, that's a lot of people. And before that, the online event was 10,000 people. So <laughs> that was like uh, during pandemic. So that's, that's, that's a lot of people. And some weekly stats to make you aware how active we are. Uh, so like last week, one to 120 active pull requests, 67 issues, uh, 96 merge requests, pull requests, 27 were open, 42 closed issues for 25 new issues. 80, almost 80 authors pushed 95 commits to, to, to the main. So like this is a, a super active project. And as you can see, actually, here is me. That's, I'm, I'm cheating a bit. I'm, I'm, I have a, a lot of commits, but it's not that I'm you know, doing most in the project. Uh, I do most in, in mostly tools and CI. 
and uh, the second one is actually a bot, you know? So, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so some, some, some areas, uh, dark outring. Uh, uh, we have a, uh, uh, excuse me, is it, is it 10 minutes? No, no, okay, good, yes. Oof, uh, I thought the whole time passed. <sighs> so, uh, if you know Airflow from the past, uh, there are some classic ways like uh, this on the left side. I hope it's visible. Like you could write uh, uh, some Python, some operators, uh, which are objects in, 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 in Python. And this is how you build your DAX. You just build DAX from, the, uh, from, from objects. And it was not, not really like Pythonic way of doing things. So in case you haven't noticed, Airflow has already for quite some time has this uh, possibility of decorating methods with uh, with decorators and just make them available as tasks immediately, which is which is much more Pythonic, less code, less things to maintain, and, and much more visible what's going on. So, uh, so we have the, these two types of working, and task flow is not used by everyone. It's it's but it allows many 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 uh, many ways of uh, uh, creating tasks in Airflow. But what is something that not many people know? Uh, we always also have a concept of task groups, which allows you to make your DAX composable from the groups. And you can expand and contract uh, those groups uh, independently when you're, you're looking at your whole uh, DAG. Uh, and they used to be initially uh, uh, UI-only concept, so only grouping the tasks together. But right now, they are fully featured uh, uh, objects that you can interact with. For example, you can rerun the whole task group uh, uh, or clear the whole task group from Airflow, which is relatively new feature of task groups. Uh, and and we are adding more and more uh, things there to make it uh, in the future to make the task group more of a uh, entity that you can interact with. Uh, uh, we have some cool ideas there. Uh, also, something that not many people are aware, but DAGs are generally in Airflow. They were generally static. They should, even in the documentation, we say uh, DAGs shouldn't change too often, or something like uh, slowly should change slowly. This is this is the exp expression we use in our documentation, uh, and that means that bas basically your DAG structure should be set before the DAG is uh, starts executing. It, it cannot change in the mid mid middle, and also when you run like multiple data intervals with the same DAG, uh, like changing it on the way uh, is not a good idea because then your list of tasks in the past will change uh, comparing to the, to the current. And you shouldn't really do any dynamic changes in the DAGs. You should rather rename your DAGs. But we have this, this, this great feature, which is uh, dynamic task mapping, which is basically like a MapReduce. So you can get a task and run it in hundred or thousand uh, instances, each of them, for example, processing a partition of, of your file. And fun in, fun out, and fun in, and then you get, you get uh, some parallel processing and your task can expand uh, dynamically because uh, the number of partitions or number of tasks can be decided on a runtime. You don't have to decide it when you create the DAG. So result of the previous task can impact how many uh, task, uh, dynamic tasks you expand. And that was already for quite some time, and that was really useful, but people wanted more. So we added more, of course. So right now you can, and, and this is the part which I was talking about, the task groups. So now you can also expand uh, dynamically the task groups. So you can have the whole kind of sub-workflow to be instantiated in like hundreds of instances and run them uh, in parallel, which makes it very powerful because you can have some uh, parallel processing of uh, partitions in some files or data uh, and run them in parallel on massively distributed uh, infrastructure, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, it's not like replacement for kind of MapReduce small task uh, run in parallel because overhead for running or Airflow task is quite big because it uses a relational database. But still, if you have a longer workflow that you would like to run in multiple instances, uh, and, and it, each of step takes uh, some some time, uh, using dynamic task mapping and dynamic group mapping is, is a really good idea. So how it looks like on the UI, so uh, and and the task, so you can you can see here 
uh, you have this uh, uh, expand, and then you have an array of things that you expand on, like one, two, three, for example, and then it will go into three instances of the task running uh, on this array of those values that you pass, and the array can be dynamically passed from previous task, for example. This is basically how uh, dynamic task mapping works. Uh, and this is like something that is very new, like you almost 100% sure you don't use it because it has been added in like 2.9. You can even set for names, custom names for your tasks. So you can specify like for your dynamic tasks. So you have a multiple version of tasks or groups. You can you can just name them because previously there were just numbers. Now it's 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 pretty useful for just just that make it very useful for different kinds of workflow workflows where you don't have uh, kind of partitions of the data but for example 50 countries yeah? and then you can name each country uh, to process separately and you can have the same kind of workflow applied to different countries and then you can see the name of the country which is actually a pretty cool small feature but but really really useful when you want to see okay why my Poland data processing failed yeah? and you don't have to look up which number was Poland. Uh, also very new feature uh, because we've learned that people are using Airflow in very innovative ways. For example, one of the talks at the Airflow Summit which I organized uh, was from Cloudflare uh, and they use Airflow to to set up their infrastructure. So basically when you set up a DNS or a new name, a new DNS name or register a new domain in Cloudflare, Airflow is used behind the scenes to set up the infrastructure, which was like, what? I mean, oh, what, strange. Uh, we, we wouldn't have figured that. Uh, but for these kind of workflows, uh, sometimes you have to set up some kind of infrastructure before you run a task and then tear it down. Like typically, typically what you do in unit tests or or any kind of tests like that. But also a number of production processing can like you set up a Kafka cluster, you do something and then you tear it down. Uh, so set up and tear down uh, is a relatively new feature, and you can you can define your workflows to use the setup and tear down, and you don't have to worry that your cluster will not be tear torn down. So basically, if, even if that one fails, this one will run and then it will tear down the cluster. It doesn't matter, like, like it, 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 it will use the, the kind of always run semantics. And, and this one, even if it, it succeeds and this one fail, the whole task uh, and further it's, it's failed. So this one is not counted as a, as a failure status. Uh, this one, like people asked it for, for many years and we finally added it. So you can use Unicode to name your DAX. It's not ASCII anymore, yeah? Like, oh wow. Which is like, actually it's, it's, it's an important thing for um, many countries where they don't even use English, yeah? So right now you can name your DAX and tasks, uh, have a display name, sp uh, special parameter, and you can name them with Unicode, whatever you want basically, yeah? As you see here uh, in the example. Uh, however, there are also a few modern features that we added very recently, and we are doubling down on that. Uh, and one of them, in which I really like, is uh, FS spec. Who knows FS, FS spec from, from Python? Not many people, but we realized that this is the, the way how you are interacting now with object storage in Python. There is a, set of, there is a specification API and set of libraries. Uh, like uh, Amazon, Google, local file spec, Git, and a number of other things that you consider as object storage. And you can interact with them via single specification, which is very, very similar to like Python uh, accessing local files, like mkdir, uh, just, you know, passing the, the paths, et cetera, et cetera. And this is actually cool, not only because it's easier to develop any kind of DAGs, uh, and any kind of uh, interaction with the files and file storage, but also a number of a prop number of tools that we interact with already have FS spec support. It's it's a de facto standard like DuckDB, uh, Arrow, uh, Spark, you name it. All those they have a native support for uh, uh, for FS spec, which means that you can define the specification, the, you can spec define the object with FS spec, pass it to DuckDB and say load, and it will load it. Without any kind of, you don't have to load it yourself, DuckDB will do it for you. 
which means that uh, we are much better integrated, like Pandas, Polar, Sparka, you see all those different different tooling there. They, Iceberg, of course. Yeah, who have heard, heard about the latest tabular, you know, but bought by the Databricks. This space is really hot, hot. That was a billion dollar acquisition, yeah? So like, not million, billion. Uh, so this, 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 this space is hot and we are right in the middle of it, inter interacting with all the new features there. But also, uh, some other orchestrators had a different approach, like we are more task-based traditionally, they were more data-oriented, but we also, also right now have a data set, so you can define a data set as an input or output to a DAG, and this way you can have data hour scheduling, so if you can see, you can see here on the, on the right, you can see that those are all data sets, and those, those are tasks, and those are data sets. And which means that you can start thinking in your, and when you, def, when you split your DAGs into some called, we, we call it a micro pipeline concept, multiple DAGs, you can think about interfacing between the different DAGs via data sets. One of them will produce a data set, another will consume, and whenever the data set is produced, uh, the new DAG will start processing the data that is produced which is actually a very cool way to split your DAGs, monolithic DAGs, into smaller ones. And we are doubling down and getting it more powerful, I'll tell that in the moment. Uh, the nice thing, and I will tell that as well in a moment, we have this object. So the thing that we are working in, making it really connected to the object storage, which means that the data set will actually be writable and readable through the same data set uh, interface. And we have open lineage integration, which is coming, which will I'll tell about that uh, in a moment. Uh, so things that we have, we've added recently, like literally last release 2.9, you can now combine this, the, the data set in logical operation. So you can have like five different data sets and get uh, logical operation, what happens when only one of them appears and the other does not. And then the DAG can be triggered if only one of them appears by uh, uh, connecting them with logical, uh, uh, logical uh, expressions. Uh, and also you can combine a scheduled end data set in the same DAG. So one DAG can be triggered every few seconds or minutes or, or hours, but also when a data set change. And this all, all can be combined in a single uh, schedule. Uh, this is my favorite feature for last few years, or, or one of, no, actually I have a lot of favorite features, but <laughs> this one is actually cool. Because it, uh, similarly like in uh, Snowflake talk before, uh, they saved a lot of time for the customers. Uh, and we don't have customers because we are open source project, but we have users. So we save a lot of time for our users. Uh, mm, traditionally, Airflow had a very synchronous way of processing. So the operator was like running something and waiting until it finishes. And that's how task is defined. But with deferrable operators, uh, which are based on async IO, you can defer your operators while they are waiting. So they are, instead of running and keeping the worker slot, they are saved to the, serialized to the database. There is a triggerer which uh, can, uh, using async IO event loop, is listening for incoming events and can handle, like single process can handle thousands or tens of thousands waiting tasks. Uh, and they will only wake the task when the data is available or when the job completed. And that, that actually leads to 80-90% performance improvements for a lot of users of Airflow. And big number of the operators of ours is already supporting these deferrable semantics. Uh, so multiple hundreds of operators out of the box. You can write your own. You, you have triggers that you can use in your processing. So this is this is now kind of fully featured, complete uh, feature, uh, feature of Airflow that you can use. Uh, when it started, the, the number of data deferred operators were relatively small, but now we are at the stage that pretty much everything you want can be run deferrable mode, including like Kubernetes pod operator. When you run Kubernetes, it will just fire it on the Kubernetes and then defer itself. When it's finished, it will come back. Yeah. Uh, small new feature. Uh, like that was like the biggest surprise for me, like how you how people will start using it. So basically, you can when you complete the task, there is an unsuccess callback, and you can specify a notifier, and you can send an email when the task completes or fails, for example, which you could do before by writing your own Python callable, callable. But it turned out that if we 
create an object which is like sending email, like a notifier, people will love that. I, I was I was totally surprised uh, because that was the most the feature that a lot of people picked up most. Uh, but it's just re very easily reusable notifiers for your task that you can configure separately per task, and it's actually pretty pretty cool. Uh, one thing that uh, that is really uh, really something that is getting us in the new world of uh, LLN AI Gen AI word is like we have a number of operators which are already using the uh, modern technology for uh, doing all the AI and LLM and and Gen AI. I think I spoke to with the with the eight guys who which who are in the sponsors here of the conference and they are in the uh, they have a sponsors booth, so they will probably sponsor Airflow Summit after that because because we are already using them and they want to reach uh, Airflow users as well. And uh, the thing is, this is also this is donated by Astronomer. Astronomer is one of our uh, biggest stakeholders, and my like I, I love to work with Astronomer. Actually, I'm the technical advisor for Astronomer. Uh, so they, they donated it after they implemented their own LLM AI, which is like eating your own dog food. This is a <laughs> this is a tool where users can go and ask a question about Airflow and get answered like chatbot, which is like cool and it works and it it, it actually helpful. Uh, I'm also one of the most active people in the issues and helping people for the last few years. So most of the answers you get are my words and, and I find references to my own answers because it, it actually provides answers. So I was actually feeding the, the bot without knowing it for the last few years. And not only me, but like you can you can find a lot of my answers there. Uh, but it's it's really cool because it's it's real. Like it's it's been used by them and they know that it's actually useful. And even if we didn't create Airflow for, uh, like we didn't create it for Cloudflare to set up the infrastructure, <laughs> that was not foreseen. We, of course, 10 years ago, we haven't foreseen the LLM AI gen world that's gonna happen. So Airflow was not prepared specially for that. But even now, like Airflow Summit, I'm a call for, I, I, I'm co-organizer of the summit. And uh, we saw the call for papers, maybe 20, 30% of our talks is about how we are already using Airflow for LLM and Gen AI. Uh, it's happening, even though we haven't done anything yet and we plan to make Airflow more suitable for those. Modern UI, I'll go rather quickly through that without going into details, but Airflow has gone through a huge revamp of the UI to go modern reactive. Uh, we. I almost have a dark mode. Like it's just uh, the PR is there being discussed. So like that, that's that's gonna end it. Like the, when we have dark mode, we are there. Uh, uh, but but a lot of a lot of work had been done to make it really nice. Uh, a funny thing about that one, if you know one of the biggest uh, uh, operator of data workflows. You will see very similar views there. I don't know who else who here use <coughs> Databricks. Um, uh, they stole it from us. This was our design, not theirs. We came with up uh, with this design of like schedule and running, uh, and they they just get it ripped off for us. We were a little bit mocking them that uh, a billion dollar company is taking it from open source Airflow. Uh, uh, so, that, so that was the nice kind of view for uh, for runs and schedules. Uh, you have a, a very nice log view that you can overview what happens with your log, but even uh, quite a recent improvement. And if you know GitHub Actions, maybe you know it very similar. We just used at how they are doing it. So you can uh, kind of group some logs together so that they do not clutter you and, you know, like set up and tear down. It's like you can see it if you want, but by default you don't. Uh, we have a nice Gantt view, which is really written from the scratch uh, recently. Uh, we have given cluster activity where you can have overview of what your Airflow uh, whole cluster is doing in one place. And a very recent 2.9, we have very nice task duration overview. And with that one, we pretty much over like revamped the whole UI of Airflow to, to use the, the modern uh, look and UI. Just the dark mode is left and uh, will be there in 2.10 most likely. But the important thing that I wanted to talk about is the, the concept of Airflow as a platform. So right now we are in the mode what can we remove from Airflow rather than what we should add to it because we think we are very good in what we are doing and there are others who do things much better than us in a number of things. 
one of those, and this is something that I think is going to uh, set off very, very quickly, because I have lots of questions about that, and I, I spoke to speak to people, and they, uh, they, they, they say this is a huge need. We have a, a full open lineage integration. So basically right now, thank you, Airflow is uh, fully integrated with open lineage in a sense that it emits information about the data sets being produced, including column, limit li column level lineage. So you can track provenance of your data, where it comes from, where it goes, including like privacy, all the you know, GDPR and all the stuff that is around that. Uh, and this Open Lineage is a standard, is a Linux Software Foundation data and AI project, uh, and uh, it has a number of consumers, as you can see, so a lot of the platform or a lot of the tooling for tracking the lineage is actually using the data, but Airflow is producing the data. Airflow is a, is a producer of the data so that it can be consumed by any of those, and, and this is actually very cool that it's out of the box integrated. We just banked that Open Lineage is the way to go. And the second one, open telemetry. So Lineage tracks the data, and telemetry tracks the execution of your program. So we can track like what, if your task is taking too much memory, or like what is doing for how long, and you can track the information about that. It's both logs and both both uh, kind of metrics, but also, uh, and this is a very res recent. Uh, so those are still pretty early days, but I'm just about to merge a PR which adds traces supports, support to, to Airflow, which means that if you have a distributed, like with these deferrable operators I mentioned, so like sometimes task starts in one place, then it gets deferred, then it goes to another worker, then it gets deferred, then it gets, and you know, it can run on multiple machines, even in the same execution. So traces allows you to trace what's happening and see everything that happened to the task in one place. So you see, okay, this, dog, this task, it was like executed here, 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 here. That, that's what happened. So we can generally track what's going on in the whole application thanks to open telemetry integration. And it's uh, open standard, Datadog, like all the different kinds of uh, tooling supports open telemetry natively. So it's just a matter of configuring Airflow to talk to whatever you need. Uh, but we also have some things that are contributed to Airflow from external, this one from Astronomer, like there is a Cosmos, and Cosmos is a very cool tool because it maps DBT workflow, which has its own DAG and its own lineage into Airflow, uh, Airflow DAG. So when you, have, you just run a DBT model and you see it as if it was an Airflow part of Airflow DAG, basically a task group. And we are going to bank on that a little bit later. This is like an open source project. Uh, that Astronomer does, it's not part of the community, it's just external, but like the way how we are thinking about that, we, we are going to enable this kind of operations for others who would like to do like it for dbt or mlflow or kubeflow or whatever different kinds of flow you have to make them part of Airflow as a natively integrated with Airflow uh, bigger DAG. This is the, the future that we are thinking of and that's a little bit of teasing on Airflow 3. Uh, so we have lots of tooling. This is a, an excerpt from our uh, ecosystem page where we have like tooling that Airflow is, is being used for, like, like tooling built for Airflow, like DAG visual editors, declarative authoring in YAML. You can do it if you like write a, a plugin or even generate the code. IDE integration, CLIs, lots debug, debugging aids, UI, UI extension, lots and lots and lots of extensions that you can use. So Airflow is a platform that can be extended by those. But also we are, uh, very much enterprise ready, and this is something that uh, that you should be aware of. As I mentioned, security is coming soon, CRA Act. Uh, we are part of the Hacker One bounty. We have a highly functional security team that that solves the security issues reported to us very very quickly and 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 professionally. Uh, even last year, we got the Sovereign Tech Fund here from Germany funding to improve the security, which we did. Actually, we used it very 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 well. So we have like SBOM, which is the Software Bill of Material, uh, which is actually um, necessary for the future for CRAs. We have reproducible builds that allow you to track provenance of the actual binaries that you are downloading from PIPI down to the 
particular tag in, uh, in, in repository. So all the security features are there. And we have a very well described public interface. So this Airflow as a platform means that Airflow can be extended and we tell you how you can use Airflow. This is a public interface that we are going to keep backwards compatible and you can rely on that. And we have a very detailed list what is and more importantly what is not part of public interface because using database directly is probably not a very good idea and we are actually very clear about that in there. But also we have a very new feature of extensible user management which means that you can outsource the SSO integration uh, outside of Airflow. We are, have multi-team is coming which is allowing uh, getting rid of the direct DB access, thank you, and supporting multiple team with single sign-on and a single scheduler web server, so we can just have one Airflow installation and multiple teams using it. Lots of discussions about that. There are some quirks. It's not yet finalized. Uh, Airflow improvement proposal, which I write, uh, is now put on hold until we decide what to do with Airflow 3, whether it goes in Airflow 2 or Airflow 3. We don't know yet, depending on the discussions. But the SSO integration will be there as well. The import, the, so the teaser from the very beginning, we have Airflow 3 discussions. So we are in the ideation phase right now, like what it means Airflow 3, what it means for our users, what they need. We, we, are, we agreed to principles and things that we want to support. So better LLM support, uh, DAC versioning. So we'll be able to change the versioning, uh, the, the, the DAC versions uh, on the fly, like during, between the runs. Uh, task isolation, which is even a better enterprise level security, so task executing will be self-contained basically without talking to the database and with all the information that is needed uh, for uh, the task to run. Easier local development is something that we want to make Airflow easier for generalizing that DAC distribution, which means that maybe not you won't have to have a shared DAC folder, but you will be able to get the DAC directly from Git, for example, or uh, via from S3 directly without having the locally mapped shared file system. Asynchronous DB access, which will improve performance. Uh, Multi-team support, as I mentioned before. Uh, we will completely change how the UI extension is uh, can be built to make a modern and uh, reactive ways of integration with, uh, with, with Airflow UI possible. Uh, and uh, native support for other languages, so you will not have to write your task in Python anymore, but you will be able to use any other language to run a task. We will create an API for that. And workflow of workflows, so what I mentioned in, in Cosmos, uh, being able to have uh, sub-workflows from other tools completely integr like nicely integrated. This is, not, this is not yet given. I'm a big proponent of that, but like, I think it's like a complex thing, so maybe it will come in like three 3.5 or something like that, not immediately, but but uh, we design Airflow 3 to be able to do that. And we, of course, remove a lot of deprecations we have, like which is a big baggage to run. So main points, Airflow is modern, true open source, they source, uh, true open source will never change, like, you know, Mongo and others read this recently, it will never happen to Airflow because we are uh, under Apache Software Foundation umbrella. Uh, it's data, AI, and ML orchestrator, although you can use it to set up infrastructure, as you've heard. Community is huge, strong, and supportive, and we continue innovating. So I think th things are coming. Uh, I'm super excited for what's coming. Obligatory uh, ad for Airflow Summit in September in San Francisco, California. We plan 800 people uh, there, but maybe more, like come and see it. Uh, it's gonna be 10 year anniversary, so we plan some special events there. Uh, and if we have time for like two minutes for a QA, that's that's it. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I have a question regarding open lineage. So how how does Airflow? I mean, do you have Airflow has to know about the data sets, sort yes. of, right? So you can't just start a glue operator that does whatever and then comes back and Airflow wouldn't even know, right? So how, how does that work? Does that work through this data set interface? That That's true. Show? So there are a few ways. Um, uh, one is data sets, so you can annotate your DAG with data sets and, and they will be taken into account. It is, this part is still being worked on, like how to map the data set URL into open lineage URL. 
the airflow improvement proposal is there approved, not yet implemented, so that, that will come into the 10. But already now, the integration is like, we have a number of operators that we know what operators are. So like interfacing with BigQuery or interfacing with Spark or in, uh, and all those, we have a few hundreds or thousands even of them already have the native support. So they, they know from the parameters past what data sets they are working on and, and what's the con context. Plus, and this is like a big change that we've done before that to prepare it, we have a like common SQL uh, uh, provider, which is underpinning for all the SQL database interfaces we have, uh, all the different databases, we have probably 20 or 30 of those. And this works out of the box, including parsing the SQL queries which are passed to those operators and extracting column lineage information from that. Which means that you don't only know like which tables you are accessing, but which columns are there, what transformations are there. So you know, for example, you could know from it that there was an aggregation of particular column and this column is now like being private and now it's not. Because you know which SQL query was actually executed uh, in there. So we have a, a Rust, I think, written parser, which was integrated by the Open Lineage team, that is actually parsing the SQL query and figuring out what uh, what lineage information is there. So it's 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 very comprehensive right now. And one more thing, I haven't mentioned that. So we are also so this is where you are using the pre-built operators, like custom the the, the 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 classic operators of Airflow. But there is this big world of those uh, Python methods which are decorated with a task flow. So we have it approved, it's being worked now, being even developed, I think PRs are already, few of them are merged. Uh, this integration would also work on the hook level. So for example, if you have your Python operator and use a like, uh, Postgres hook to come, in, to come into with SQL, the lineage information will be taken from the hook, even inside, inside the Python operator. So this is gonna be even more comprehensive than it's now. It is, it is, it is kind of magic, yes. Yes, it, uh, like, the thing is like, you don't have to do a lot to make your lineage information available in your DAX. You just enable open lineage and you get almost everything there except like maybe few operators or custom operators that you wrote that you have to add. And it's very easy to add your lineage integration to your custom operators, it's just one method to implement basically. Thank you very much. Time is over. I think Yarek is still available after the talk. Thank you, Yarek, for Thank this you. talk. Thank you.